think this competition's amazing. It's great to meet other designers who are out there designing and in Vancouver and to gain exposure for our brand and just to do something completely new, I think. And I love the consignment idea that we're actually taking things and making something new out of them. I went to um, school at Emily Carr to study visual art and I did printmaking, which is great because it goes so well with fashion and textiles. From Emily Carr, I learned a lot about printing and I took that to textiles and started printing on silks, which is actually really unique because I was doing etchings, not um, silkscreen. So it's a really delicate look. And I'm really excited to bring that to fashion because it's something you don't really see done by hand. My favorite fashion era is the 40s, 30s and 20s. I like the tailoring of the 40s and the simplicity. And I love the elegance of the 30s and the bias cutting and the gowns. I've been collecting vintage and antique linens. And this one I found in Gastown. And they're just amazing. They're from the owner's collection. And they've got beautiful detailing and embroidery and lace trim. And what I love about this stuff is this would take forever to make and that someone's hand made this and I can incorporate it. To me, adds so much to the aesthetic and to the visual. And they're just treasures because, well, they're so old, so they have their own ambience. So I like to collage that into my work a lot. The bustier is kind of the result of pieces like this. I've taken embroidery and added it to my own and hand dyed some of the laces. There's all sorts of different pieces. I think there's about eight different antique pieces on this um, one bustier. As much as I admire fashion, what I really care about is telling a story and making a work of art or making something beautiful that makes someone feel. I'm very excited to be a part of this and look forward to the rest of uh, the Vue Ballet design competition. Yeah, after I finished high school, I was, you know, very drawn into the fashion industry, so I actually started in um, fashion merchandising and management at the Art Institute. And then, you know, within six months of that course, I realized, no, this is not right. I need to be hands-on. I need to be designing. This is, this is what I love. I love to draw. I love to paint and sketch. So why wouldn't I become a designer? You know, anybody can do it. So a strong, confident, powerful woman is the image that I like to portray. And... Yeah, just to have fun with life and you know not be not be limited, I guess. My ideal woman that I am st designing around is, you know, something that I myself would wear and also yeah, other females that more androgynous, that um very chic, yeah. <laughs> I like to stick to a lot of monochromatic color schemes. I really enjoy the color black as many designers do. And um, yeah, I'm very, very structured. I'm taking some inspiration from my final collection from the Industrial Revolution because again, it's that strong female, right? It's the first time that women were in the workforce and they had to, had, they had to get jobs and support themselves while the men are away at war. So of course you're gonna have these strong independent women coming out of that decade. So. Well, I would say that, you know, the 20s were a great time period because, you know, who arose out of that? Coco Chanel. She brought on that powerful woman. She was the first one to chop her hair off, to wear a bow tie and trousers, and it doesn't have to be garters and ginormous skirts and all of that um, extras. I could list top three easily trends that I would love to never see again. Ugg boots can just go, bye, see you later. People should not wear leggings as pants. It's, it's not flattering, it's not stylish, it's not doing you any justice. Just stop, stop doing it. Juicy tracksuits, it's bad. Um, I'm not gonna answer this one. <laughs> I have no idea what this, uh, what this challenge is gonna entail, but uh, I think I've got some ideas in mind, just um, you know, with my general style and what's out there, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty exciting, so can't wait to see what's going to happen. I'm from La Paz, Bolivia, but I've been traveling for the last 10 years, so I consider myself a little bit like a modern gypsy. So I decided to study environmental engineering because I love also being outdoors. First I got that degree and I got a scholarship and I moved to, San, to Seattle and that's how I got involved in the fashion industry up north. 
I got an internship with Giordano and the designer owner. She's a teacher at the Academy of Art. And I was the only one that wasn't a designer or anything that was interned there. Everybody mentioned Alexander McQueen. I really love him. He kind of fight with his demons through his designs. When I was a kid, I read a lot of Nietzsche and Hermann Hesse. So I always trying to understand the duality of your own soul. And I feel like he reflects that in his designs. Somehow I feel like I do the same, like my art is like my liberation. Really like to use um, different type of materials, let's say like leather and silk to kind of find the balance. And I'm using like metal parts, I'm using bicycle parts of my collection. And seems like more like an engineering situation. But I don't want to do a granola type line, you know, like a hippie line, because that's not my style. I want to still keep it like very edgy, very elegant, but try to be the more eco-friendly possible. I have plans to maybe get material from back home, like alpaca wool, and have like an NGO back home, so that way I can help the communities down there, but I can sell that stuff here. I have a really bad bicycle accident two years ago. And right now I've been walking around all like very fashionista, but I'm missing a tooth. And <laughs> it's kind of funny, like people think that it kind of suits me and they are like, that's so Lady Gaga is so good on you. <laughs> and I'm like, sure. But anyway, so not even being toothless has stopped me. Fashion is all about showcasing how you move. No matter if you are the best designer and you're hiding in your room, nobody gonna go knock your door and be like, can I see your designs, right? It requires a lot of like drive. I cannot have any more better opportunity right now. I've been interested in fashion probably since I was little and I think I officially decided that being a designer is what I had to do probably in grade seven or eight. My Oma used to be a seamstress, so she noticed my interest in fashion and actually signed me up for some outside of school classes to learn how to sew. I guess it just kind of got passed down the line. I'm at Kuala Polytechnic University studying fashion design and technology. I'm going into my third year this September. They teach you fashion, but they also teach you business. They teach you not only how to design, but to be a success, to actually make something of yourself and be able to support yourself with the skills you learn. I needed to know how to market myself and be able to sell my garments and actually be able to make a living off something I love to do. And I think that people should be confident in what they're doing and what they're wearing and should feel good in what they're wearing. And I just wanna, I guess, help people see the beauty on the outside. <laughs> One of my favorite designers is Valentino and I always look back to him, he's very inspirational for me. He is always elegant, he always wants his models to look and feel gorgeous and he doesn't dress them up like runway clowns. He dresses them up like gorgeous, beautiful, confident, elegant women and I think that's how they should be dressed. I love the 50s because of the circle skirts and the modesty of the era. Just the way the women presented themselves, they were so confident and not putting too much out on the table but still a little bit of vixens. And you can still be sexy and reel people in and have that little bit of a lure without um, having your double D's hanging out. A variety of this is the spice of life for me right now so I'm kind of dipping my hands into all different styles. I mean I go from um, pink and flowery, Valentino type inspired pieces to steampunk. That's, I think, where my style comes in, is just bringing inspiration from everything around me and bringing it into something structured and flattering. I love peplums and asymmetrical hemlines. I've been really into that lately, the really flared skirts with short on top and really long in the back. They look gorgeous and they're so flattering. And I think that's really important that our consumers are starting to become more knowledgeable and starting to actually care about where their garments come and where they were made and how they were made and who made them. And I think that's very important. And I've done some recycled garments before, um, projects and competitions. I've done similar things before and I love um, being given limitations and then finding a way to work outside of those and to uh, expand past that. So I'm definitely looking forward to the challenge. When I decided to become a designer was actually pretty recently. So I thought, you know what, I can do this. I have the background, I finally have the patience, and I have the time. So I finally sat down and just started making things. <laughs> I want my designs to really speak to girls and women and have them wear something that's fun and shows their personality. It's, it's definitely a younger feel. It's, it's cute, it's sexy. Not to say that if you're older you couldn't wear it, but I think the, that demographic would probably feel the most comfortable in it. I've, I've never really been able to relate to a certain designer and I think that is why 
I started doing my own thing because I wasn't finding what I wanted to wear. So I thought, you know what, if I can't find it, I'll do it myself. I call my line Clarisky Business uh, because um, I, my stuff is kind of classy and risky. I want my stuff to be, you know, people to see it and say, you know, wow, that's, that's you know, a little bit of a risk, but, you know, it's still classy and it's, it's cute. You know, cutouts and open backs and, you know, a little bit shorter skirts, but like I said, still, still very classy and, and still cute at the same time. I feel what makes my designs unique uh, to me in Klerski business is it's something that maybe you haven't seen before in stores. It's maybe that little extra that you're looking for, but it's not too far out of the box that people don't want to try it. Trends to end for 2012. Uh, oh, the, um, the mullet dress, the, the long, short in the front and long in the back. I would say uh, that I'm gonna be a bit of an underdog. It'll be interesting to see how I compare, you know, with no schooling at all. Um, just kind of things out of my head and what I've picked up and learned on my own. But uh, everyone loves an underdog, so I think it'll be interesting to see. The designer challenge, I think, is uh, going to be a really good opportunity for um, young designers to get out there and, um, you know, kind of showcase Vancouver a little bit and what they have to offer. And it'll be, I think, a good push.